Good evening everyone and welcome to a new episode of uh, Russlandsfarerne. Today we're going to talk about the Komi language and the Komi culture. And uh, with us today to talk about this uh, theme is uh, one who's 100% uh, Komi herself. Uh, she's uh, a teacher of a Finnish language uh, at the University of uh, in Siktivkar. Uh, and but she's also a published uh, uh, poet in the Komi language, and uh, uh, her name is Olga Bashenova. Uh, welcome, Olga. Hi, everyone. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, how do you say hi in uh, Komi language? Cholum. Cholum. Da. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cholum. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But uh, to, uh, to start from the beginning, uh, for those who have never heard anything about the Kami people or the Kami language, just tell us a little about who they are. Okay. Uh, the Kami people mostly live in the Kami Republic in the north east of Russia, uh, in the European part of Russia. They are around two. 200,000 and it is about 23% of the whole uh, population of the Komi Republic. This is the statistics of 2010 but uh, we will have a general census in 2020 <laughs> so we can see uh, is it is the Komi people uh, population decreasing or not. <laughs> But I think that it is decreasing. Um, I can say that uh, the Komi language belongs to the Permian branch of uh, finno ugric languages. And uh, the Udmurt language is also in this uh, group. And we are closer to each other than, for example, uh, the Komi language and uh, the Finnish language, <laughs> but we don't understand Udmurts. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you yourself were, were born in a village where everyone speaks Komi, because we know each other from before, because you, in fact, uh, show me around in the uh, in your village while we while I was there, and uh, yeah, I'm all uh, awfully thankful for that. But uh, yeah, tell us a little about uh, that village, it, because it's a village where everyone speaks Komi, right? Yes, uh, it is in the Yemdin district, uh, in the west of Republic, and uh, uh, there are about uh, 13 villages together, and uh, uh, the Komi language is spoken. Uh, everywhere in this uh, area and uh, <laughs> we, the villages are situated on the high skill or on uh, the high hill mm. Mm. Uh, sorry and uh, uh, this hill is called Odgara which means uh, uh, Ot hill Ot is uh, the name of this hill Mm -hmm. And my village is called Kajmudor. It means uh, a land near the peninsula. There is uh, the Wichita River uh, near the village. And uh, it is uh, the second uh, river in the Kom Republic. The first one is Pichora. Uh, mm -hmm. It is the biggest river in our republic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and uh, like, uh, yeah, because you speak Komi with your family as well. Yes. Yes. And uh, what about when you, when you think, uh, mm -hmm. uh, do, do you think in Komi language or in uh, Russian when you are thinking? Um, when I am at home with my family, <laughs> I think in Komi. But um, when I'm in institute, for example, <laughs> mm. I think in Russian. Mm, yeah. 
So it depends upon the situation, basically. Yes. 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 But your heart is Komi. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yes. Always thinking Komi. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because I write poems in Komi and I cannot write poems in Russian. I don't know why. <laughs> because my heart is Komi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. That's very, very interesting. Like, yeah. of course, that's. It seems like that is your language. If you, if you cannot write poems in Russian, so yeah, so you are one hundred percent call me, but, uh, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, but uh, besides the language, language, what's the biggest difference between Komi people and Russians, if there are any? I think uh, the Komi people are like. Finns, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> uh, because uh, we uh, we like just just uh, to observe something, uh, and uh, we prefer to be silent <laughs> and just uh, look <laughs> what happens. <laughs> but uh, Russians, I think, uh, they like to be at the center of attention and. Uh, they like talking <laughs> about everything <laughs> and sometimes they uh, like interrupting you <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially the interrupting part i can attest for is uh, yeah i can get behind that 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 is unfortunately true that most russian are interrupting uh, when you're speaking uh, even my teacher back in oslo but uh, yeah, and I also agree that because I went to your village and I met your family as well, and they, uh, it's interesting because they let me finish my sentences for once. That was interesting to see that they were listening and were very, uh, very observant or, or, or always hang on to every word. So yeah, I can see that difference too. I can see the similarities between Komi people and uh, and fence and uh, yeah and, and also the fact that you both seems to love saunas but uh, of course every people in the north including Norwegian love saunas but not of course uh, in the same me uh, measure as uh, fence and uh, uh, and Komis because yeah yeah but uh, okay. mm -hmm. yes but. Um, yeah, tell us a little about the the Komi language itself. Naturally, it's a lot easier for other Uralic peoples like Finns and Estonians. But uh, what about people outside this category? Category is it difficult? It's more difficult for a German or a Norwegian to learn it. Uh, yes, I think it is more difficult for other uh, peoples um, because. Uh, the common language is also agglutinative. Uh, it means that uh, words may contain different morph morphemes, suffixes, mm -hmm. and um, we don't have uh, any prepositions. <laughs> uh, we have just postpositions and suffixes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so when we want to say about the object which is like which is located in the house for example mm. we say kerka un uh, mm. it means in the house <laughs> but it is a, a one it yeah. is one word not yes. two words <laughs> yeah that seems very difficult but uh, yeah. yeah and uh, yeah i actually learn uh, try to read a little about the Komi language itself. This is uh, uh, what what shall I say? Uh, like a book about the the Komi language, or like a, a learning book about the language. So yeah, I find some things I find easy and some things I find difficult. But uh, after studying Russian for uh, almost four years now, I can say that it has been easier to understand the system of. Uh, grammatical cases because like in context like uh like Komi Yisik have 16 right 16 yeah, right? 16 yeah and yes. the uh, Russian have six 
and uh, English has not. So, yeah. But uh, mm. for me, it uh, the the Comey system seems uh, pretty pretty straightforward in many cases. Like with the it, because many of these uh, grammatical cases are basically in English prepositions. Like in yeah. like the like the preposition in you have basically moved it to the end of the word instead yeah. of an own preposition. Yes. So so I can rec uh, and when I read uh, try to read some Comey texts I can recognize uh, uh, what kind of word it is like it, like the the plural form is always uh, without any uh, exception uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, we, yeah. when we talk about yeah. uh, animals, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, animals, uh, for example, osh, yeah. uh, and uh, when we speak about uh, children of animals, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> uh, they have a yan suffix yeah. instead yeah. of yes, but yeah. it is an exception. Yeah. <laughs> But that is something that is weird because that's also in Russian because that, there you also have a special ending for uh, uh, like ch uh, like children of animals like uh, yes. <laughs> ka, like uh, yeah for example kachonok that's yeah. the uh, that's the singular form of a kitten and then you have uh, katyata. So yes. It's the plural form, so it's also the yata uh, mm -hmm. ending for some reason, and that seems to be something that is be, uh, something about the Komi language that uh, and the, the Russian language. Something they have in common is the special uh, special exception for uh, children of animals. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so that is very interesting, and uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's easy to see the patterns. Like for me, who have studied uh, language with uh, grammatical cases, it's easier for me to uh, uh, to see the patterns. Like if I see, for example, for example, like say a word like uh, yeah, uh, like pon pon a dog pon pon yes uh, pon yes. Uh, pony, uh, pony, yes, <laughs> yeah, it's it right, it is yeah. right, um. yeah, Eli Kerkas, Eli, uh, Kerka, ya, yes, in, yes, that's right, yeah, that means basically, uh, in the towns, in the cities, yes, yes, uh, is uh, the plural form, mm. and uh, un, mm. in English, it is in. Yeah. in the house. Yeah, that's the locative. The locative, in. Yeah. that's the yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but uh, yeah, th because that's interesting. But of course, there's a lot of difficult words and the pronunciation. Like yes. it's not, but uh, it's easier for if you already know uh, about grammatical cases. And uh, but one thing I find it e also easy is that uh, that the adjective. Uh, never changes no matter yeah. what uh, it does not correlate with the uh, uh, with the head now yes the, yeah it's, it's true <laughs> yeah yeah that's also very convenient and also you have no genders that's also very convenient yes it is also convenient <laughs> yeah because and we have a stress on uh, always on the first syllable <laughs> Yeah. It is very easy. Yes. Well, in Russian, it's we, uh, Wild West, but also in Norwegian, like in many languages, there's pretty Wild West. Uh, yes, but uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, but uh, what is the situation of the Komi language right now? Is it dying or is it growing? What do you think? I think that uh, it is not growing. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, um, the Komi language is spoken mostly in villages, and you can see that our villages are dying, uh, people move into cities, 
uh, and uh, when they move into cities, they stop uh, speaking Komi. They start speaking Russian. Mm. Russian. Mm. And uh, uh, last week I heard a report made by the chief of the preschool education in the Komi Republic and she said that only 3% of children speak Komi in uh, preschools. Mm. Yeah. And I think that when we have a general census mm. of uh, Russia, uh, Russian peoples, mm. maybe uh, we, it turn, turns out that the number of Komi people is decreasing. Yeah. Or like the number of uh, people who are identifying as Komi is uh, yeah. decreasing because yes. there's a lot of people who have Komi blood still. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, but it's also an interesting history or like a dark history because uh, uh, apparently before 1920 or something like that, uh, the Komi language were spoken by what I've read like 90% of the population of the Komi Republic but yes. uh, uh, it's all but thanks to the construction of gulags like most of the big cities if not all the the big cities in the, the Komi Republic are basically a result of a gulag being built there so of course you got an uh, influx of uh, Russian, Ukrainian, Tatar and many other different uh, people group that uh, spoke Russian, unfortunately. So that is the reason, that is the number one reason why the Komi language is on decline. Yes, it's true. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, but do you think enough is being done to prevent an uh, entire extinction of the Komi language? I think it's uh, not enough uh, because we don't have a national school uh, we have uh, only the Gobi language as a subject mm. uh, in our schools and uh, if we have uh, a national school w where every subject for example uh, biology mathematics uh, taught uh, in uh, Komi, <laughs> so children will think that uh, 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 I think that children will appreciate that uh, the Komi is uh, uh, rich and mm. developed language. Mm. Yes, yeah, but uh, how, how do you see the future of the Komi language and the Komi culture? Uh, I think that we have only two variants, alternatives. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, and if we have a true democracy in our country, mm. when uh, people uh, appreciate and respect themselves, their parents, their children, uh, they will uh, improve their language, our language. Mm. And uh, if uh, we, uh, <laughs> on the other hand, I think that <laughs> if we uh, just uh, will stop uh, learning uh, the common language in schools, mm. it uh, will die. Yeah. But uh, do you, do you have a rich uh, Komi literature? Is there a lot of uh, books written in Komi, or is there many books written in Komi? Yes, it is. Uh, but uh, nowadays <laughs> we have uh, less books that are written in Komi yeah. because uh, <laughs> um, there. Are no such uh, more readers mm. in uh, common language as uh, earlier. Mm. 
Yes. And uh, yeah. And uh, with the fact that you have uh, written some uh, poems in uh, the Komi language, would you be so kind to read uh, one of your poems for us? Uh, yes, of course. So thank you. <laughs> uh, this poem is called Chujan Kub, which means mother tongue. Vijmena Kojiches Zerishes Kovtan Dashibitan Tushis Ekat Nelioklan Ogvieshi Tekat Mestashis Navina Tekat Mevurvakot Micha Vijmena Netana Vija. That was beautiful. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, but uh, roughly speaking, what was that uh, po uh, poem about? Uh, the message of this poem is that with my mother tongue, with my language, I am stronger of all and I will not turn bad and I save my language because it saves me. Mm. <clears throat> that was a translation, what you just said, or? <laughs> not, not at all. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, that was, okay, yeah. <laughs> message but yeah. uh, it's not a whole translation <laughs> oh, okay yeah i was a little confused but uh, yeah but uh, yeah maybe i should uh, read more uh, uh, more common language and try to translate translate <laughs> it or so maybe a couple of your poems and try it for just for fun just to translate them to russian and then to norwegian for for pleasure yeah. But yeah, but uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, um, uh, Olya, uh, for for be uh, for coming on this podcast, and also personally thank you for showing me in your vill uh, showing me around in your village, and uh, yeah, and uh, 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 tell me so much about the culture. Like I really appreciate everything you have done for me, especially. Yeah. Thank you too, Jens. Yeah. And, You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And uh, how do you say thank you in the, the Komi language? Atya. Atya. Mm -hmm. Atya. It, it's, it sounds very much like adieu, like the French, uh, like the French word for goodbye. Adieu. Yeah. Atya. Yeah. Atya. Atya. And uh, how do you say uh, uh, goodbye in uh, Komi? Adjishlutaji. Oh, that's a trunk to a twister. Uh, <laughs> Adjus. Ad. Ad. Adjish. Adjish. Lutaj. Lutaj. Da. Adjus lutaj. Da. No, adjus lutaj. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>